Hello Aquarius, this is going to be your Sun, Moon and Rising reading for June 2024. This is a general, general reading, so the messages will not resonate with everyone. Please check back to your Moon and Rising sign video. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can now find my reading packages in the About Box section of my channel. And I have just noticed that the about box section of my channel has moved um there's no longer a tab for it so to access if you're on desktop and the same works on hand handheld devices look where you see the custom link at the cars hidden loaded tarot Underneath that, you should see my name, Tara Buffington, B-A, and out next to it is an arrow. Click on the arrow and it should reveal the About Box section. There I have listed my readings by with the number of minutes, number of questions, the price, and the delivery method. Simply email me at the address that you see right there on the screen, hiddenlotustarot at gmail.com and say, for instance, Tara, I would like a 60-minute reading. I will respond back to you with an email containing booking instructions, instructions and a payment link. Once you respond back to me with the information I'm requesting to book with me and payment then I can conduct the reading <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought I have a thing written down here so my turnaround time for producing the readings are 48 to 72 hours after receiving payment and the answers to my booking instructions because I don't believe in making people wait for a reading. There's just, just no point in it. Many people will purchase a reading from a tarot card reader and they tell them that they have, they can't book them in until three months later. Well, by that time, what you want information on or counsel on has passed. So I don't like making people wait. Let me put my paper right there. I have done some meditation and shuffling on your sign and glyph. I have with me the, the uh, Radiant White deck. <laughs> the La Vida Sibila for clarification should we need. And we'll, we will wrap the reading up with a Psychic Oracle Tarot. Damn this um, aphasia. So here we go. I'm going to shuffle some more and do another rifle on the cards. And then we will get straight into the reading. Uh, my uh, candle has gone out. And I would like to relight it with some incense. So just bear with me. there and we will light some incense to help the guides come down and assist with the reading it 
it takes me at least 10 times longer to do things now. Okay, and let me cut the cards. This will be a nine card spread. Let's begin. Seven of Cups. The High Priestess. The Nine of Wands. Next row, the Six of Swords. The Moon. The Page of Coins. The Will of Fortune. The Three of Wands and the Three of Swords. Let me, what is the energy over the entire reading? The Four of Swords. Let me see what I have here. I have only One repeater number, it's a three. I have one cup, two swords, a pentacle, and a wands card. I have two wands, I'm sorry. So I have one cup, two swords, two wands, and a pentacle. And I have three major arcana cards which are your spiritual lessons. In the center, I have the moon. And the moon can reflect having hallucinations, illusions, dreams, psychic, e psychic events. But the moon talks about our deep psychological fears that come to the, up to the surface. If you notice in the card, there is a dog and a wolf, which represent the domestic side and the wild side of ourselves. And there is a crustacean crawling up out of the water. Those represent our fears. And the message of the moon card is, you are going to have to travel that path alone. You know, uh, sometimes the moon can be such, particularly a full moon, we can illuminate, illuminate the path for us, but the things that we see in the moonlight can look scary and different. It's not like the light of the sun where everything is clear. You know what it is. right the cards are read past present future past present future interplay other cards on the top row i have the seven of cups sevens are moments of pause and reflection questioning yourself and the seven of cups says you have so many options you don't know what to choose from in fact you can have a nightmare See how the figure is in relief? Um, I gotta turn the one light around because the glare is too much for me. So you can have nightmares about what to choose from. You know, notice how the figure is in relief and the cups are in a cloud, nebulous not firm, not clear. And in the seven of cups, you have temptation, self-actualization, property, money, peace, and power. 
So the card counsels that you need to know what this unknown thing is. Because if you can find out what it is, it can be the most important thing and some of the other things will fall away. So you should focus on what's most important so that you can come to the correct conclusion about what it is that you want. And that's what cups um, represent. Uh, they simply represent how you feel about something. Right? Moving over to the High Priestess, she is a two. So she represents, as a two, crossroads, decisions, choices, oppositions, whether you are opposed about something within yourself or someone is actively opposing you, and choices. I... Picking up on the letter J, I don't know if that means anything to anybody. But the High Priestess says she is the keeper of the library. Meaning sometimes she sees things, but she doesn't say anything. The card counsels to trust your intuition. Trust your gut feeling. You don't always have to act on your feelings, but know what you are feeling. And I think for some of you, it represents a battle. Here we have the nine of wands. Nines are a focus on completion of events. And it's like you arrive there suddenly at this place where you are. Because behind the nine is eight wands. The, so that implies to me some speed behind the situation. But you have arrived at a place where you can't do anything about it. But rest. And that is the same feeling that the Four of Swords have. It's a card that talks about meditation and rest of the mind, body, and spirit. Perhaps you were involved in a, a complicated situation before, but now you have decided to retreat. So you can block out the noise and think carefully. And incidentally, this is an effigy. It's not even a real person. So this to me is disappearing off the scene. Maybe you or somebody else who was involved, but you have the fourth sword there at the ready to get up and think clearly. The Nine of Wands talks about having good character and determination to see it through to, to the end. The Six of Swords, it's a six, and sixes are numbers of love, balance, and harmony. But in this case, it shows me that indeed Maybe there was some kind of complicated situation in which you are involved. You didn't know what to think about it or what you choose. And you were treated into yourself. The Six of Wands says that you are moving from stormy waters to calm waters. It can sometimes reference a trip by water, around water, near water, over water. It says that there could be possibilities of separations, of breakups, falling out, fallings out with people. And also the two of swords in the picture. Here you have four swords, which are those four swords, but you have two off to the side. So that to me speaks about being undecided or indecisive the person in the boat can be you and your a child or it could be your you and your inner child this could be an actual person in your life or the universe moving you along 
The card says you are to have respect for yourself. But the most important thing about the Six of Swords is that wherever you go, you take your thoughts with you. We come over here to the page. And pages only represent news or messages for me. So uh, uh, maybe it happened <clears throat> at this full moon or maybe the next full moon. Where a message will come in. It's either financial in nature or it's about doing something different or differently. All the page ever tells me it's news. It always represents to me just messages. If it was a night, the night comes to move a situation along. That's how I read them. But I see movement here, but it's before you receive this message. And then we come to the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is 10. It means a completion of, of events. It's related to all ones. So the magician and all aces are related to the 10 card. I mean the will of fortune. But the will of fortune says that a big change or life event is going to happen to you. It may be a good thing or it may be a bad thing. So the way that you work with the Wheel of Fortune is you learn to fix yourself in the center of the wheel so that no matter which way it turns, you are not too badly affected. You can deal with it. On something here, the Aquarius and Leo axis is popping up in my head. I... I don't know if they're, that's where the nodes are right now. Let me check. <clears throat> the nodes are in Aries and Libra. Which is a fire and air at the same time so you have Leo and Aquarius and that's speaking to me I don't know when the nodes will be entering the axis of Aquarius and Leo but there you have it the three of wands and I forgot to tell you that the wands represent your focus your passion, your determination. What does it take for you to get up every day and do what you do? So three of wands is about a business deal, perhaps negotiations. But in the three of wands, we see a figure with his back to us. We don't know what his face looks like. Or what his expression is. But you can clearly see three ships. One, two, three. And he's standing on a bluff. This is about making a decision and then going forward with it. So we don't know if he has to send his ships out. Or if he's waiting on them to return. Either way, he has to wait for news. He doesn't know if the ships were attacked by pirates or it sunk, but he has to wait. So threes always indicate some kind of pause or delay before future successes can be realized. And that there may be a third party involved. The swords represent thoughts, beliefs, perceptions, ideas, and communication. But the Three of Swords has a sense of vision that says sometimes you have to deal with short-term pain in order to receive a long-term gain. 
So again, this could be fights, uh, breakups, divorces, separations, not just a, with a, a partner or a spouse, but it could be about business too, a business partnership. It talks about betrayal, uh, resentment, an attack on your feeling center. Somebody said something to you or you think they said something to you or they think about you in a bad way and it really hurts your heart. But just remember that the Three of Swords tells you that this pain will not last long. It's not a Nine of Swords or Eight of Swords or a Ten of Swords. It's a three. And as a matter of fact, it's three less than the Six of Swords. So if there's something that requires you to travel or move to a destination and you are sad about it, the, the sadness will not last long. And so I can read the Seven of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Six of, I mean, the Nine of Wands, the Six of Swords, the Nine, Three of Wands, and the Three of Swords. And you have two threes. That's important because it's, the, the numbers repeat. I can read these cards as they relate to the High Priestess, the Moon, and the Wheel of Fortune. Let's start at the top and with how the cards fell. The Seven of Cups. Next to the Wheel of Fortune. It's telling you to seek out the right advice before making important decisions and moving ahead with your plans. There may be some aspects you, you miss and with the right guidance and advice, you will prosper in your endeavor. So maybe there is somebody around you who has the answer. Next to the will of fortune, you are asked to seek the right advice before moving ahead. It looks like some of you don't. But whatever. <laughs> the nine of wands. It tells me nothing. The Six of Swords. With the High Priestess. Maybe warning you not to proceed with current plans. As there are some aspects that have not been revealed or considered appropriately. That's why you've gotten that message. You are asked to wait until you have all the relevant details. Next to the moon, the Six of Swords may be indicating that it would be advisable to be sure any of any plans you intend to make as a full picture is not yet clear. All the details have not yet come together, so it would be beneficial to put things on hold for a while, wait until the time is right. With the Wheel of Fortune, it tells you to expect some changes in financial or material realms. Realms, the page of that, that's what the message can be about because it's not just finance, it's about the third dimension. So, the material realm you are due to reap reward, rewards for work done in the past. Do not take any unnecessary risk at this time, at the near future. In the near future because it will be more auspicious auspicious as financial benefits are on their way into your life the six of swords with any ten card the will of fortune is ten it is an indication of travel 
journey, vacation or holiday or even a change of residence. I said that, didn't I? If you have to move away and leave something or somebody behind, you will be sad about it, but it may involve a major decision which ultimately will lead to movement of some kind. However, look carefully at all aspects of a situation as there may be hidden traps or pitfalls and look out for unnecessary expenditures. The Three of Wands. With the High Priestess. It is indicating that achieving your spiritual goals will give you a deeper understanding and an enlightenment and will ultimately awaken your intuitive abilities. With the Wheel of Fortune tells says that you should remain having a positive attitude as this will bring about positive results three of swords tells me nothing but two threes together Tells of a small but pleasant surprise. So all in all, I don't think it's um, it's kind of like being perhaps bittersweet. Something changes in your life, and you may have to leave something or someone behind. But in the end, you learn that, which is a spiritual lesson. You learn that the pain whoop is short term. And in the end, you may gain something much better for you, much greater than what you thought you were going to achieve. And I don't need to pull any Sibylas on this because it's giving you clear messages not to proceed until you thought everything through, that not all aspects of the situation are available to you at this time remain positive and it will yield positive uh, rewards for you but that there's definitely going to be some type of sadness involved it doesn't say you're gonna die <laughs> you know it's not that kind of pain so I'm going to pull a Psychic Oracle Tarot for you. And there may be someone in your life who um, can offer you good advice. But if this is you, it's cl clearly saying, trust your, what your instincts are telling you. But... Check over your plans before moving forward. We have the strength card, which is uh, the power card in this deck. Oh. As a spiritual Excuse me. As a spiritual being, you have unlimited power at your command. This card represents inner strength, willpower, courage, compassion, and generosity, and love. The card, this card tells you that that's what it's all about, about your character. At any moment, these beautiful qualities can assist you in coping with an adverse condition in front of you or the many surrounding you, your life. Set aside the necessary time to resolve such issues. Take a break. Don't stress.
Power represents more than physical external strength. It can also be channeled emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. When you have balance over body, mind, and soul, and with the power of spirit, anything can be overcome to achieve a positive result. Power and strength can be developed to work in harmony in any given situation. Every obstacle, every error helps build your knowledge and understanding of the world around you. When you make a mistake, it's a chance for you to stop, listen, and ask yourself, what am I supposed to be learning here? And how can I make this situation better? Mistakes are wake-up calls and that they provide you with opportunities to discover your weaknesses, what needs to be changed, and what areas of your life need improving. Equally, they can be blessings in disguise. Just remember, you are the power. That's like I'm telling you here. This looks like it's going to be a blessing in disguise. Sometimes we have to leave things, people, and situations behind to continue forward on our path. There it can be a lot of pain involved in that. But, like the card says, as a matter of fact, I think there is a... Let me look. Three of Swords. Maybe telling of a difficult and or painful issue, which must be dealt with quickly, as some realities need to be faced and important changes made. In the short term, this may cause disharmony and feelings of loss, but long term, you may find that new changes to be exactly what was required, much like a blessing in disguise. And that's what I have for you, Aquarius, for June 2024. Good luck.